August was a month for marathoning, apparently. So, in August I got a little bit distracted. I'd used my birthday money a long time ago to buy the first omnibus of my favorite webcomic, Girl Genius. So I thought in August, what the heck, I'll read that. And of course, once I read that, I had to marathon the rest of the whole thing. If you haven't read it, go check out Girl Genius. It's all online for free. I'll put the link below. I cannot recommend this series enough. It's a five-star series, and I don't give out five stars easily. I think my review on Goodreads is the most perfect thing in the world, and I stand by that. Its tagline is adventure, romance, mad science. It's sort of steampunk, though the creators prefer to call it a gas lamp fantasy. It's an alternate reality where Europe is ruled by mad scientists. The main character is named Agatha Heterodyne and is a strong female lead character actually done right. Gilgamesh Wolfenbach is probably my favorite secondary character, though Tarbeck has grown on me as well throughout the series. This thing has won three Hugo Awards, people. Check it out. Link to the webcomic below. So, marathoning 13 volumes of this baby took a lot of my reading time in August and put me 13 books ahead on my reading challenge. Yeah, I may be addicted. I did manage to read a few other things in August. Out of Their Minds by Carol Matas and Perry Nodelman. I've been rereading this children's slash YA fantasy series that I loved as a child, and I gotta say, they're just not that good. I'm pretty sure my memory invented an entirely alternate storyline because these books are about nothing that I remember them being about. I will probably end up going on to the last book of the series just to make sure that I'm not missing something wonderful, but I don't think I am. Blood Promise by Rochelle Mead, the fourth book in the Vampire Academy series. I love this series. I'll be honest, this isn't my favorite of the series. The first half of the book is really slow and seems more designed to delve into backstory. The second half was much better, but still felt more like a prologue to set up book five more than anything else. But I have a feeling book five, which is spirit bound, is going to be epic, so I'm excited to move forward. The last weekend in August, I got a bit distracted from reading because I decided to marathon Emma Approved. If you don't know, Emma Approved is the web series which retells the story of Emma by Jane Austen, but set in modern times. I'd started Emma Approved when it first came out, but the first five episodes or so didn't really catch me, and apparently I'm not very good at remembering to come back every week. But Emma Approved is now all wrapped up, so I decided to try it again to see if I liked it. Well, apparently I just needed to get it to about episode 9, and then I was hooked. I finished the entire series in about 24 hours. I've read the book Emma multiple times, and I'm a fan of the movie with Gwyneth Paltrow, not to mention being a fan of Clueless. But still, this version was able to reinterpret some key moments in a way which made me look at the story differently. Alex Knightley was properly swoon-worthy. I enjoyed the actress that played Emma. I thought the actress who played Harriet was a little weak, but I thought they actually managed to make her love interest, Robert Martin, into a robust, interesting character. Whereas even in the book, he was always almost an afterthought. So I thought that was a nice touch to bring him out a bit more. I think the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which was Bernie Sue's interpretation of Pride and Prejudice, was still a tad bit stronger than Emma Approved, but that's splitting hairs, really. Emma Approved is still now one of my favorite things I've ever seen on YouTube. And now I need my next fix. I know Bernie Sue is partnering with the BBC to do Frankenstein. Is anyone watching it? How is it so far? I could go back and watch Welcome to Sanditon. I would started it when it first premiered, but I found the first 10 episodes or so kind of boring. Does it get better? People have also suggested The New Adventures of Peter and Wendy or Green Gables Fables. What do you guys think? Have you seen any of these? Are they any good? Are there any others I should be checking out? 